And we should be good to go. All right, okay. I'll kick it back to you. Let me know when you want me to stop the share. Okay. This is going to be a recorded session. So if and I think most of you are without camera, but if you don't want to be in, in the recorded session, you can turn your camera off and uh, when you need to, you can turn it back on. It's totally up to you. All yours, Mike. Okay. Uh, welcome to Zawi Estimation. And we're going to be going through the rules, basically just to touch on how things would happen on the actual day of the competition. The students walk into the room and they're coming to station number one and they'll have a, be a bucket like this one, if you can see that. And it will be uh, full of a substance. Usually it's pasta of some kind, but it could be anything. Uh, one day, one year we had nuts and bolts and it was 13 nuts and bolts and one bolt that added up to 100 grams. And usually a plastic cup of some kind is being used. Anywhere from a 10 ounce cup to a 24 ounce cup, usually. And then uh, after the students have turned in their cup with their, how much they think is 100 grams in the cup, they're going to station number two. And they're going to be estimating the number of objects in a container. And that would be uh, something like this. And here, this is a uh, see through on all sides container, Myers container, and it has pasta in it. And we're just uh, count, trying Excuse to count. Excuse me, Mike. Um, yeah. we, we're looking at a copy of the rules. So we're not looking at a copy of uh, like your camera. We can't see what you're showing us. Okay. All right. Well, continue, see, think about a container, um, plastic, and inside of it has pasta. Oh, here we go. Maybe you can see me now. Um, that's not actually touching that in front of it. Okay, there we go. This container right here has pasta in it. And I'm going to talk about how you do it in a few minutes. This was the bucket we were talking about earlier. Large bucket containing anything from rice, pennies, usually pasta of some kind. One time it was spaghetti, which was a little more difficult to handle because it didn't sit in the cup completely. It stuck out of the cup a little bit. So you want to practice with your students what 100 grams is, 100 grams of M&Ms, 100 grams of pennies, 100 grams of nickels, 100 grams of lima beans, whatever you can get your hands on and let them walk around with that in their pocket and they pull it out every once in a while and put it in their hand and say, that's 100 grams of whatever they've got in there. So they get used to what 100 grams feels like. Again, station number two, I'm going to talk about now the difficulty it is in practicing for station number two because we've changed the parameters in previous years. We now can have up to 20,000 in the container instead of 10,000. That's a big difference. And so it's, when you're practicing this, people who are coaches tell me the hardest thing they're doing is making a container that has objects and they have to count 17,000 objects. I said, no, that's not how you do it. So for example, in this one here, we have, I would count out 100 of those little pasta pieces, weigh that out. Let's go and they get 3.4 grams, do another 100, Weigh that, you get 3.5 grams perhaps, and then another 100, and you get 3.6. And you add those up and divide by three, you get 3.5 grams. Okay, so then you take your, uh, you pour some bunch of pasta into this container, weigh the container, subtract that from the total amount, and you're going to get, you know, 98 grams, let's say. Divide that by 28, or excuse me, three point, um, yes, 28, you're going to get, uh, every 28 is uh, two point, excuse me. Yes, every 28 grams is 100. So then you're going to have 350 in here, approximately 350. Um, if you had something like rice, for example, it'd be much more difficult. You count out rice, yes, count out rice 100 to three times, and you might get an average of uh, 3.5 grams again, just for picking a number. And so you pour in 605 grams of rice into the container, divide by 3.5, and you get uh, every those, each one of those is 100. You're going to get 17,285. So then you don't have you, you've counted 100 grains of rice three times, which it's a little work, not the same thing as counting out 17,000, which would be very, very difficult and take a long time. So this way you get you can practice the stuff with your kids and it does not take an, an, amount of, an, an amount of time for you to do so. So they get practice with things in the 300s, 400s, things in the couple thousands, and then you're going to have you know uh, something in the higher range, 15, 16, 7, 18, 19,000. If you can practice those three ranges, something in the hundreds, something in the thousands, something's in the you know, 12 to 18,000 range, you're going to be uh, covering the three things that we usually do. We usually have one in the low range, one in the middle range, one in the high range. 
the three different containers. Last station is station number three, where we've increased the number of cubic centimeters from 2,000 to 4,000. And so now, before, a, this was about the biggest box you could have before, was this cube Kleenex box. Now we can go to this Kleenex box. It's 2,800 and so. So this will be, you know, the options are much bigger now. People are telling me they had a hard time you know, finding staples or uh, boxes of chalk or crayons, stuff like that. So this is what we used most of the time before. It was a box of crayons of some kind and lots of those and boxes of pencils and colored pencils and whatever, staples and paper clips. So now we've got more options for practicing. And of course, you can better teach your kids to measure the length times width times height. They have to have some wrinkles on their hands, no markings of any kind, of course, no ink marks or magic marker marks on their hands to be able to depict what five, five centimeters is or whatever. Usually you want to have your students have something on their hands, little finger from the tip of their little finger to the middle, um, the wrinkles on there, something that you can find that's going to be two, three or four uh, centimeters, and then something in the mid range of five, six or seven, and maybe the, uh, from the tip of their finger down to the bottom of their palm. And that's going to be whatever that might be 10, 11, 12. <clears throat> if they have that, then they got a good way to be able to estimate. What you don't want to have happen is students, for example, I see them taking this box of Kleenex here, this large box, and they're taking their little finger and they've got you know two or three centimeters and they're measuring once, two, three, four, five, six, seven times across one length. Well, each time they do that, they can be off by a centimeter. And so they do that seven times and off by seven centimeters, and that's huge. So you have to have one large uh, metric from their hand or fingers, one medium-sized metric, and then one short one. So they might do 12 and, and 10, or two, 10 and 10, and then they might take the little finger and do two and two and do, oh, I've got 14 here. So that's how they might, that's a good way to do it. So the less times you have to measure on each side of this box, or whatever box we use, that means they have less chance of being off by a larger amounts. Okay. And of course, there's the scoring situation where you have to, if the students have a, an estimate that's higher than the actual number, then they have to, uh, we have that on the rules book, rule, rules page there to show you how to uh, divide the, their, their, their answer or their estimate by the number that it actually is. If their number is higher, you get a number a little, a little larger than one, you subtract two, you get a number times 100, and you get a, uh, a number of point, a number of percentage that you get. And that would be, there's a minus sign in front of it, but you ignore the minus sign, you just take it off. If their estimate is less than the actual number, you take that number, let's say 3,500 divided by 4,000, you get 87, 0.875 times 100 gets an 87.5%. That's pretty good. As usual, when, we do, when students do this, if they're in the 90% range or better, then they're going to be getting a medal of some kind because that's about what happens in the first through 10th place or so is we have the top places are getting 92, 93% on average across the board. And as we go down to the 10th place, there are 88, 87, 86, 85%, depending on what we're doing, of course, with the how hard things are. The year we had spaghetti noodles inside, the, the un, uncooked spaghetti noodles inside a cup, averages went down on that a little bit because that was harder to measure or harder to estimate. Uh, nuts and bolts was a bad year, too. We had probably 86% was top first place because nuts and bolts were very difficult to measure because we're turning in cups with uh, 20 nuts and bolts in it and we're getting a score of zero for the first station because they were more than double. Anytime you're more than double on any of these estimates in your team, for that portion, we'll get a score of zero for that particular piece. And of course, there are seven scores, one from station one, three from station two, and three from station three. So a perfect score, of course, is 700 if you could ever get close to that. But getting close to it, about 90% or so is, is the goal. I'm open for some questions, if anybody has one. Anybody? Go ahead. Yeah, so I got a couple, Mike. Uh, this is my first year doing this, so I'm just trying to get everything uh, together and make sure I'm coaching them up the right way. Um, so is there a certain cup that you guys are going to use for station number one? Like I noticed a styrofoam cup in the video. Is there, could it be a, a different size and a different weight, different material that we should practice with? Yeah, you should practice with um, at, least a, at least an eight-ounce cup at the smallest the number if I was using rice or something like that. I could be using a cup that small, possibly, and up to, uh, I think the biggest cup we've ever used is a 24-ounce cup, a solo cup. And that was uh, okay. pretty good. That was uh, that, that year we used the nuts and bolts, and of course, that 24-ounce cup needed to be filled about one, 
maybe like 15% of the, of the capacity that also yeah. threw them off because they were thinking they had to have it at least half full. So we right. had 25 bolts in there and we were getting 300, 400 grams instead of only 100 grams. So yes, yeah, okay. so you can also use a solid, more, a more dense cup, like a plastic cup, just to uh, give them, I might not do that very often, but you never know. And so yes, yeah, so think about a, uh, a plastic cup that uh, you, know, you kids use for uh, working out or, or you know, on the soccer field or something like that. That is an option. You should practice okay. that a little bit. So they, they don't have just that flimsy little plastic cup, which weighs anywhere from eight to 20 grams. Uh, so that's where they have some uh, some diversity. And uh, and that cup that's used, whatever it is, is still going to be subtracted from the total. So it should be 100 grams uh, subtracted from the weight of the cup. That's right. 100 grams in the cup. So whatever the cup weighs, do not consider that. Right. So if it weighs yeah. the cup 12 grams, then you got to you think about 112. 112 the cup grams. Weighs. Okay. The cup cool. And then if you 30 grams and you need 130 in your hand, so to speak. Okay, and then uh, I assumed, which I guess I'm assuming wrong, uh, that the the stuff in number one and in number two, we're gonna need to be like symmetrical items. But I hear you say nuts and bolts. Uh, no, then doesn't not have to be. They're, they'll be all the same, well, relatively so. But yeah, nuts and okay. bolts were they were all the same nuts and bolts, so they were all equal. So they were all put together, except there were some that were not put together, so the students could put in what they want to uh -huh. do. Is 100 grams or whatever it is, doesn't matter if it's huge or small. You know, it'd be, whether it be uh, cornmeal, which I'll never use again because if we were coated in coatmeal, co cornmeal everywhere. So although it says cornmeal on there, I think it says that on there. I'm never going to do that again. We, <laughs> we came out of there looking like we had been at a bakery shop or something. We had cornmeal everywhere. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because we practiced that today with some cornmeal. The kids <laughs> like the feel of it. Uh, they like the texture of it, you know. It's not bad to practice one time. So yeah. but it, it's quite messy. Yeah. And, we won't, we won't be doing that again. That was that was a disaster. But yes, but yeah, any small, small, you know, all kinds of peas, beans, dried beans of different kinds, whether it be lentils, uh, peas, uh, small beans, large beans, lima beans. Those are all okay. wonderful to use for practicing. And uh, for for station number two, is there like a limit on the size of the container that you guys are using? Uh, so I kind of have a good feel for what to. There's expand no, up to no limit not really. okay. the right. one here was a quite uh, quite tall cylinder only done it once and in there we had elbow macaroni and so it was you know it was not square so but this the thing is with station number two don't get caught up in the length times width time height which is what station number three is all about right right just just get the top layer and then multiply by the height of it not the top layer and then count how many layers you have is the perfect doesn't matter what container you're in. Now, if it okay. has, a, if it's tapered or something, then you have to consider, you know, subtracting a little bit off. If you have a tapered, which I've never, which I think I've done maybe once, a slightly tapered uh, uh, container. But uh, most of the time, it's not tapered. It's it's uniform, either a okay. cylinder, a rectangle, or a cube, something like that. All right. And then the last question I had uh, is: It still? Um, I heard you say twenty thousand max uh, on number two. And then, uh, so for number three, is it a 4,000 um, centimeters uh, cube max? 4,000 centimeters cube max, yep. Okay, all right. Which goes pretty quickly. I mean, this this uh, yeah. this, this box of Kleenex here is uh, uh, 12 by 9 by 23. And that's 2,484 cubic centimeters approximately. And then, so if you go up to, let's say, 13 by 13 by 23, you're, at, you're, you're almost at the top of the 4,000 range. You go, it gets big very quickly. Yeah, and a little bit more. So this box, this is about the biggest box you'll be able to find that you'll practice with is a Kleenex box, a large, large Kleenex box. Okay. And then the time limit is uh, 30 minutes, I saw. Is that uh, like combined for all of them or do they have a certain like five minute time increments or they use that 30 minutes however they see fit? No, they see fit. Although they, they, they turn in their cup for station one, they can't come back to station one and say, can I have my cup back? That's too late. Now, if okay. they're on station two, I don't, students will go to station two or station three, depending on how crowded it is, because we do have up to like four, in the past years, we've had up to 40 teams, uh, 40 kids, I should say, 20 teams at a time, 40 children, and that's quite a bit. So if you have uh, you know, some people working on station two, some working on station three, now if they just, we've had it happen before, people are working, I can see them working length, time, width, time, height on station two, Go, they go to station three and start working on length, time, width, time, height, they go, they go, wait a minute. <laughs> and so they, 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 they ask, can we go back to station two? And I tell them, absolutely. You can go back, you can go back and forth between station two and three as much as you want. Okay.
And then it is just 30 total minutes, though, um, for everything. That, sometimes yeah. students are 15 if they – sometimes that you, you think that it means that they're pretty good at it. That Sometimes that's the case, but not often. Sometimes when they're done in 15 minutes, they had no idea what they were doing. So, <laughs> right. Uh, the average is about 20 to 22 minutes. Okay. Something like that. Most kids are done about then. But then you have some students who are going over something. They, they will re redo what they did two or three times to make sure they like what they like with the answers. And so they're actually there for like 27, 28, 29 minutes for almost the whole time. So either way, okay. it's fine. We're done in 30 minutes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Anybody else have questions? Now so guys, this is your chance to ask questions. You can put it in the chat if you if you don't want to speak up, or you can speak up. If you put it in the chat, I'll read it out to uh, Mike. Uh, also, when we are done here and you need a clarification on an item, you can look up the FAQs that are on Macomb SO website. And if it's not clear enough for you, you can send the question in. And it generally gets routed to Mike through one of us, and we post the answer uh, out on the website for you. So FAQs are your next option if you have any questions. I'll still leave it open for a couple more minutes in case anybody has questions. Also, we'll be recording this, so if anybody not able to see it, uh, we'll do our best to post this video on so people who did not participate can take a look at it. Sounds like no other question, Mike. Are we good? Okay, we're good. All right, I will stop recording and then uh, we are done. Hope thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you. Yep. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Uh, uh.